Hello there. This is a new genre of videos I'm going to do called Kato Shed because I'm actually doing more stuff in the workshop now. There's going to be a lot of uh, building, electronics, hopefully getting into building a, a CNC machine to go on my 3D printer which will be the start of uh, doing a lot of design work. So 3D modeling all the way through from the CAD to the CAM to the production. So this is the first one. I actually bought uh, this bandsaw, mobile bandsaw, because I'm going to be cutting up a lot of billet material and also trimming finished parts, cutting spruns, hector, hector. So I'll take you through. I'm going to integrate this into this big hole in my workshop that I currently have. I don't know what it was for. I don't know if the previous residents had some kind of table saw. But that's what this video is going to be. I'm going to try and figure out how to integrate this, uh, build a table and integrate this mobile table saw into that table. So here we go. I hope you enjoy. Absolutely amazing classic. Uh, yeah, so I can zoom out enough to show this. I've got a big hole here. and I didn't want a bandsaw in here because it would be so big, but I've realised I can utilise this hole. And uh, we zoomed in a bit much there. So what I'm doing, I'm going to create a structure for this and then create a, a base over here, use wood, hopefully this is thick enough, a couple of those, if not we'll reinforce it and uh, we'll get it just so it's level and then we can just slide one along through the brand. So it's like I've got a table saw but built in. Excuse me, how will we mount this? Having a first look, you want to look at uh, the pickup points. So like these guys, this looks perfect for mounting right here. And also where this hook is, they've obviously designed this. They've obviously designed this for being picked up and loaded by these two points, obviously. And the main handle. And uh, that'd be a really good place, I think, to load it. And now if we look at the... Uh, it's got a nice rubber top and bottom on there for in the field ruggability, survivability. It's got a cutting plate on here and I think that needs to be flush with this bench. So uh, top of my head, this is rough, I mean it might change. I think we need like a boss here which has sliding holes in it and that can fit in. And then we can finite adjust this and get it perfectly straight and then maybe have something come up from the bottom that supports here. And I think that will get the thing solid and really nice and easy. We can use this quick release screw, uh, maybe a quick release something down here. So we can pull it out and pluck it back in quite easy. So yeah, let's build some uh, little boss to put that in. I think it'll be nice to get it resting on something so we can adjust and fettle it rather than trying to balance the whole thing in the air. Should be good. Okay you guys, a quick sketch here, we'll just, this is very basic, this is all you need to do, it remembers when you take this in the garage with you, it reminds you exactly what you were, uh, the numbers you needed, exactly what it was all about, and you, you know, as you're cutting the metal you may see some of that as a problem, very simple, like how high it needs to be roughly, and we're going to let this slide, it's going to be a boss, it's going to be two the vertical webs if you will, and then we'll join them together, we'll try and find some metal for that, and then because of this, uh, where it, the handle fixes, it doesn't protrude that far back. It's almost level as you can see as this. So it's going to clash with the end of the of the table here at the bottom. So we need to have like a, a, a gooseneck almost that sticks out. So what kind of distance do we need there? So we've still got to measure that. Oh, another tip with the metal. If you start doing metal work, DIY, welding or anything, and the, your world will change, you'll scavenge, you'll just see stuff on scrap tips and you think, bloody hell, that's some good. Because if you try and go to a local store and buy any kind of uh, steel, it's bloody expensive. Like just a sheet, you know, a foot square can cost you, you know, up to like six, seven, ten bucks. And that might just be to play with welding just to learn what you're doing. And I've got like the cheapest welder in the world. So no expert by uh, a million miles. But yeah, so this is just... PC that was given away, so I took all the metal off it and left the parts, and uh, brilliant, brilliant, and that's something to play with, it might work, I don't know about the gauge, I mean it's pretty good, we're going to get two of those, we'll have like, uh, we'll have them joined together, it should be pretty strong, let's see. Here guys, we're just trimming out the 
profiles for the side webs on the new bandsaw. Okay, I've quickly cut out this rough shape and then it's always good just to check it against uh, the part just to see. And we've got more than enough clearance there it looks like. Try to keep smooth, you know, structural analysis guys don't like sharp corners. Out of the scrap metal I used, I only had enough length. Both have to be more than 7 inches plus the edge distance required on top of the hole. Uh, not really going to have that. I'm only going to have a tiny little bit, like half inch, and I want more, so I'll figure it out later, maybe weld uh, a plate on there as well. <sighs> it's going to be true, the only thing I am great at is making a good cup of tea. Right, cut these profiles out, and they're pretty good. So this is kind of the, uh, the shape. We've got the black to the outside. So the, and I've cut this. Uh, I found this much more uh, probably twice the gauge steel. These guys, they're going to form a boss, and then the axis is going to run through here. The bolt's going to run through there. Now I was really worried about these EDs uh, here. I mean, it shouldn't matter because we're going to have like a rotation force that's going to be in there and it's going to be resting against a base probably as well, which takes most of the load, but I just want it to be tough. And I found this bit of uh, steel, I think this was off my old simulator seat when I cut it up and I put it into my simulator, I ended up with loads of really good uh, steel. So I think I'm going to cut these off and put them on there and it's natural slots so I can cut away the material in the back, super easy, find nice washers for the for the, the ball that goes through the middle, that should be really nice and strong. So what I'm going to do here is use this slot that I've cut off and kind of straighten because I bent the crap out of it, <laughs> uh, bending it straight to cut it. I'm going to use this and uh, basically colour this in and then cut it out. Yep, these are, no, they're not terrible, they're not terrible. Any welder, I'm sure, somebody welds would know this is too thin really for welding to this. It's just gonna buckle under the heat and it'll try and burn through. I had the heat on a quarter of what this thing will do and it straight through, so I turned it down to minimum and it was hard to weld it. But it's not too bad, I mean, bloody hell, what are we doing, what are we doing, what are we doing? And now this is the base plate, that's what I cut before, and this is actually a bit thicker, which is nice. And now that's going to sit there and there, right on the edge of the wood. And then we're going to have stiffeners in between here. The best way to settle out this up is actually use what you can as a template. And templates are really good, rather than just measuring it every ruler and judging stuff. There's a lot of uh, places you can make errors and they accumulate. So if you can attach stuff like I'm going to do here, and I can put the base on and maybe tack it and then I know it's going to be a good fit for real life use. I don't know, I think we've got like a reenactment of the crows going on outside. So we've got extra 40 mil length in here, the two sides of the handle would be. And the cat because the cap is closed on the end, it gets so far and it's gonna stop. So we could just put a regular screw on there and just use a but I'm just gonna drill the end out, I think. So let's remember before I've got this jigged up now in there, so it's come tight. It's really nice. This is basically just the how it's going to be to position it. You can see the end of the table is going to be here, so put a rule against that. We can see the edge of the table is going to be here, so there's going to be plenty of clearance. 
And uh, this is just going to be one of the brackets for the top. And I'm going to fix this onto the table before I work on the uh, bracket that's going to go here, I think, and I don't know yet. And that's going to be really good because it's going to let me fix it and then just adjust it minutely. And I've also got the slots so we can really set the tabletop out and position this to the top of the table slot and then lock it up and then it's just going to stay there and then we can fit the way this bracket's going to be. Maybe we'll slot this as well. Who knows? We'll have to see. Now, something you got to remember when you're always welding is cleaning the metal up because this is like off a computer case. It's got this nice black plastic on it. Uh, or paint or whatever it is. Uh, so we can just go along and take this off. Just really wear gloves, but for the video. Here I thought I'd just make a few L brackets for the, the desk that I'm going to build. Much cheaper buying these 98 cents a uh, little strong beams than buying shelf brackets. As it's bloody freezing in the garage, I'm going to go inside into the little workshop and start working on the tabletop. <laughs> 